assured that our redemption is complete through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give us the will and desire not only to profess our love for you with our lips, but to live it out in our lives. We pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grants us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow in his steps in the way that leads to life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might 
forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down in worship. These are the words of life. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two others of the disciples were going together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quality and quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the full net of fish, for they were not far from the land. But about a hundred yards off, when they got out on the land, they saw a charcoal fire in place, which fish laid out on it, and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew that it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so did the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. <clears throat> In today's uh, New Testament lesson, we find Saul walking along the road approaching Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashes around him. He falls to the ground, and he hears a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul asked, Who are you, Lord? And the reply comes, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. If you have one of those Bibles that prints the um, words of Jesus in red, you will see that the Gospels are full of scenes that Jesus makes during his time on earth. But here in Acts, the Lord, we have the Lord appearing and speaking to Saul, who has been persecuting Christians. And in doing so, he is persecuting Christ himself. And we also see, see the Lord speaking to Ananias, the Jewish believer in Jesus, who was told to receive Saul. And Ananias must have been perplexed because I know this man. I know what he's been doing to your people, Lord. And God tells him that Saul is his chosen instrument to be a messenger to those Gentiles and kings and that Saul will suffer greatly for the name of Jesus. Today we celebrate one of the great turning points of history. It has been said that without St. Paul, Christianity would have remained a small Jewish sect. Many attribute the rise of Christianity to St. Paul and his work. In our text, the narrative tells about Saul's conversion and they, he does it straightforwardly. In other parts of scripture, we have Paul's own interpretation of the events. He speaks of his conversion in two places in Acts and refers to it throughout his epistles. He wants his readers to know that he, like the twelve, has been chosen by Jesus, that he saw Jesus, he heard Jesus, and was commissioned to be an apostle by Jesus. In our text this week, we were also talking about some church traditions emphasizing conversion. I grew up in a small town in Arizona, and there were a couple of Lutheran churches. One of the churches emphasized you must have a born-again feeling or an experience to become baptized. Uh, as traditional Lutherans, we sort of look at that and go, whoa, that's a little strange. That's not what we understand conversion to be. The other church was a more traditional and they believed that everything about conversion was the work of the Holy Spirit. C.S. Lewis tells of his conversion. Now, how many of you know where C.S. Lewis converted to Christianity? Anybody know? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's one of the strange stories in all of C.S. Lewis's uh, works. He was in the sidecar of a motorcycle on his way to the London Zoo with his brother. When he had left home, he was an unbeliever, and somehow, in route, the Holy Spirit worked on his heart, and in the words of C.S. Lewis, he was surprised by joy and came to believe. <clears throat> Hans Nielsen Howard was a Norwegian reformer who was plowing his field singing an old German hymn entitled, Jesus, I Long for Thy Blessed Communion. And his heart was so uplifted, and he regretted that before he had not had an opportunity to serve the Lord that he experienced. And finally, John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, 
He was already an Anglican priest, and he went to the Moravian Society in Aldersgate. And at that location, he heard someone reading Luther's preface to the epistle to the book of Romans. And as he listened to the description of how God works in the human heart through faith in Christ, Wesley recalled the following. I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust Christ, Christ alone for my salvation. And an assurance was given to me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Luther himself talks about his tower experience when he became to understand God's grace. And he was convicted and converted. It wasn't something Luther did, or John Wesley, or C.S. Lewis, or Hans Howe. It was the work of the Holy Spirit. Just like the Holy Spirit worked on the road to Damascus. Saul was an enemy of Christendom. Saul was, had letters to arrest people in Damascus and haul them back to Jerusalem for a trial and, most assuredly, an execution. <clears throat> Saul was so bad, he had a part in the death of Stephen. And yet, this enemy of God, this person who persecuted Jesus, was called to faith. Was called to faith, and not only was he called to faith, he became one of the most faithful apostles in all of Christendom. He believed to the point of death, because Paul would eventually give his life for the cause that he had persecuted. We, are we to think that somehow we are unworthy of God's love? The poet Henry Nowen wrote, once wrote this, we all have our secrets, thoughts, memories, feelings that we keep to ourselves. Very often we think if people know how I felt or think, they would not love me. These carefully kept secrets can do much harm. They can make us feel guilty or ashamed, and they may lead us to self-rejection, depression, and even suicidal thoughts and actions. One of the greatest dangers to our spiritual life is self-rejection. When we say, if people really knew, they would love me. We chose the path toward darkness. But we are precious in God's eyes, and we all are his pure gift. To grow beyond self-rejection, we must have the courage to listen to the voice calling us God's beloved sons and daughters. If God can love someone like Saul, who hated Jesus Christ and his followers, you can be certain that you are not outside God's love. You are precious in God's sight. God forgives you in Christ Jesus. Should you forgive yourself? <clears throat> the second thing we learn today in our text is that the power of Jesus. Saul was a Pharisee. And he was a very religious Pharisee even before his conversion. He obeyed the law down to the my, most minute detail. But Christianity is not the same as religion. We are called into fellowship with a person, the risen Jesus. We enter a community that is in fellowship with Christ. We bear Jesus' name into the world we inhabit. Our text shows the role of the Christian community. Paul is visited by Ananias, and through prayer and the laying on of hands, 
Paul is healed of his blindness. Paul is welcomed into fellowship of believers and who were at first reluctant because of his background. And when hearing his testimony, they accepted him with open arms. Think about that. Who is your enemy? Who is our enemy here at peace? And if they convert, are we willing to allow them into our fellowship with open arms like Ananias did with Saul? <clears throat> Maybe you think that, well, oh, I'm, I'm not the one that's, you know, going to, the person to bring the word to other people. And there may not be a Billy Graham sitting amongst us today, but we all have our own callings to teach. We may teach children the word of truth. We may talk to our co-workers or other students about our faith. It isn't upon us to convert that individual. Let me say that again. It isn't upon you to convert that individual. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. But you are expected, you are required to first tell that person the word. Did you know that the Lutheran Church operates the largest social services network in the United States? Did you know that we have more nursing homes than any other church body? We do missionary work in over 60 countries. That the LWML donates to poor and needy people throughout the world. We all have the calling to pray, to support and encourage one another, to bear Jesus' name in our families and friends. And yes, even to our neighbors. And as the old thing goes, if you cannot preach like Peter, if you cannot pray like Paul, then you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. Now, following Jesus is never an easy thing. Jesus said to Ananias, I will sh myself show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. Meaning Paul. And in Greek, it really says that Paul had to suffer. And Paul suffered. He was in prison, shipwrecked, and finally martyred in Rome. But suffering is just something more than a few must go through. Suffering is the mark of the church. Someone once said, a wolf never attacks a painted sheep. There are counterfeit Christians throughout the world. Real Christianity is always in peril. It will suffer persecutions, it will suffer at the hands of secular authorities and to suffer, unfortunately, is one of the greatest compliments because that is certain proof that others think we really matter. A bold witness to the Lord Jesus will cost us. To be a disciple of the Lord Jesus means that taking up a cross and following the one who was crucified. If we suffer with Jesus and if we die with him, we will most certainly live with him forever. The road we walk is never an easy one. The road we walk is sometimes lonely. And that's why we are tasked with upholding and uplifting one another in our daily walks. That is why we, 
as Christians, try not to judge those around us. Yeah, we're going to fall and we're going to fail. But remember that God chooses to forgive us and not judge us. Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary, our account is wiped clean. God sees forgiven sinners, not people who just de deserve justice. That's what following Jesus really means. We are forgiven, and we are tasked to be the arms and legs of Jesus throughout the world. Doesn't mean that we are going to be called to some foreign mission field. It doesn't mean that we might be called into the ministry. It doesn't mean necessarily that we are called into a particular thing. What it does mean is that we should always be ready to share the word of God with our fellow man. Others will water that seed that is planted. You may not even be around when that seed bears fruit, but all our efforts, all our actions are for God and to be God be all the glory. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please rise. Let us confess our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things in this world and this world. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, be God not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under conscious Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. Please be seated as we worship God with our tithes and offerings.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, keep us from craving and weeping after what we no longer possess, but instead give us contentment in the daily bread you so graciously rain down upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Cause your Holy Spirit to rest on us and our pastors, that they may prophesy your word publicly and faithfully amongst us. And we in turn may prophesy your word in our homes and locations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O Lord, bless our elders and church council with the necessary gifts of your spirit, that they may faithfully serve the congregation, support our pastors, and uphold the ministry of the word amongst us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O Lord, uphold all those who serve in law enforcement and in the military, and those who bear the sword in our land, that sin and wickedness may be kept at bay, and we may live peaceable lives in security. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for peace in Eastern Europe, that you may bring an end to the war and restore peace and freedom to the people of Ukraine. We pray for the children and young people there. Preserve them in body and soul from suffering and injury. We pray for the brothers and sisters in the Church of Ukraine and Russia. Keep our hearts from hating one another and show them the ways to serve peace. Proclaim your word and celebrate the sacraments. We pray for all who have political responsibility. Direct our hearts to peace. Help them to serve truth and justice and guard the hearts and minds of people from error and falsehood. Merciful God, Keep us in your peace, and grant peace to all people for whom we have prayed. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Save and raise up those who are suffering and sick, especially Betty Romero, Fern Lake, Lila Briggers, Jason Palmer, Martha Cisneros, Lee Makowitz, Lori Brody, Marty Brody, and Doris Inouye. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the family of Dale Ward as he passed to the church triumphant, and so rest in the promises of everlasting life become the cross. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We praise you, Lord, for Daniel Sanchez, Kevin Bedoy, Alejandra Silva, and Hannah Havens this week of their birthdays. O Holy Spirit, we praise you for Lori Brody celebrating this week rebirth and adoption to your family and the church by your holy baptism. O Spirit of God, may the Lord be with you by serving others. O Lord, do not speak your words. O Lord, do not speak your words. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant, Lord, that all who come to the altar today to receive the heavenly manna of Christ's body and blood would be well salted with repentance and faith, and at peace with one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Who's right? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks to grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love. Show it to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and the archangel and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Lord, remember. 
teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is not the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Likewise, on the supper day, he took the cup, and again he gave thanks and praise. He gave it to them, saying, Take all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood of the new covenant, shed for you for the remission of all your sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance for me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our final hymn.
be back amongst you guys. Uh, missed you all. Uh, let's see. Uh, standard uh, Sunday. Uh, coffee and donuts right after. And then we're launching into uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 10. So hope to see you all there. Any other announcements or bits of wisdom? Go in peace and have a blessed week. Mm -hmm.